All right, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all who braved the snow to make it here. The UN mission in the Central African Republic has strongly condemned the violence that has resulted in loss of life and population displacement in Pawa in the northwest of the country. According to preliminary reports, armed men of the Revolution Justice Armed Group attacked Muslim neighborhoods on the night of the 31st of December. Following the intervention of UN peacekeepers, tensions had decreased by the afternoon of the 1st of January. However, the presence of armed group members in the city is preventing a return to normalcy. The mission has sent reinforcements and multiplied patrols in the city to better prevent attacks against civilians. Uh, in response to questions I was asked earlier, I can say that we are aware of reports of an attempted coup d'etat in Equatorial Guinea on the 28th of December. Little information has emerged on the details of the attempt. We condemn all attempts to seize power unconstitutionally. The Secretary General's Special Representative to visit Malabo next week to meet with the authorities. And I was asked yesterday about the use of Braille at UN headquarters. Braille overlays that are customized for the delegate voting units at UN headquarters have been available for delegates since 2016. They're provided to delegations upon request through the advanced team of the meeting servicing unit of the Department for General Assembly and Conference Management. In addition, requests for Braille overlays can be made in person through the United Nations Accessibility Center, which offers information and communications technology to support delegates with auditory, visual, or physical impairments. The Accessibility Center is located at level 1B near the Secretariat building escalators. And that is it for me. Do you have any questions? Yes, Carol. Farhan, you've seen the reports of uh, South Korea and the U.S. deciding to suspend military drills um, during the Olympics in South Korea. I'm wondering what your reaction is to this. And this coming after the um, reopening of the hotline and uh, uh, Kim Jong-un's overtures to the South, or is there a sense here that we're, we're uh, seeing the beginning of a thaw? Well, uh, let's continue to see how matters develop. But uh, as uh, I made clear yesterday, the Secretary General is very keen to make sure that all the Security Council resolutions concerning the denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula can be implemented. And in that context, he is hoping uh, that uh, the recent moves will help uh, pave the way for, for such resolutions to be implemented uh, through diplomatic initiatives. And, uh, and of course, we'll continue to monitor the events as they develop. Yes. Uh, Farhan, thank you. Uh, with regard to Yemen, it seems there's intensification of targeting civilians everywhere by uh, the Saudi-led coalition. Today, a restaurant was hit in Hodeida. All these people in the restaurant, many of them were killed or injured. Uh, yesterday, there was another, another massacre. These are happening at uh, very high frequency. What does the United Nations think about that? Do you condemn it, or, or is there any progress in, on the political side as well? Yes, uh, regarding uh, our concerns about the fighting, uh, Jimmy McGoldrick, our humanitarian coordinator in Yemen, made clear his concerns about the situation in, in uh, Hodeida uh, just a few days ago, and I'd refer you back to his press release. We continue to be concerned at any attacks on places where there are concentrations of civilians or, uh, or alternately, uh, uh, civilian facilities. Uh, regarding uh, diplomatic prospects, of course, Mr. Ismail Ul Sheikh Ahmed continues his work, and he's trying to reach out to parties to make sure that there can be a halt to the fighting and a return to negotiations. Yeah. Sure. Just uh, on what you read out on, on Equatorial Guinea, I'd asked yesterday about the country team there. You say you don't have information, and about Ms. Kumba Mar uh, Gadio. Is she still the resident coordinator, and what's the status of what, of, of the UN's actual presence in the country? We do have a presence there, a country team and a resident coordinator. I believe she remains uh, the head of the office. Um, uh, but like I said, uh, regarding our response to this situation, what we're going to try to do is see what uh, uh, Special Representative Fall can achieve when he visits Malabo next week. And one other a question, I guess, on, on Francois Fall. Um, the, the Commonwealth Secretary General, Ms. Scotland, uh, visited Cameroon, and she went you know, to, to Buya, uh, Bamenda, she went to the, to the, to the region. She's issued a, a, a call for dialogue. And so it made me wonder, 
And I wanted to ask you again, it doesn't seem that Mr. Fall in his visits to Cameroon has actually visited the Anglophone areas. Has anyone in his team done so? And is, the UN, is his approach, such as it is, to Cameroon in any way taking into account or working with the Commonwealth or, uh, under Article 8 or otherwise of the UN Charter? Well, he reaches out to different interlocutors a as needed, including regional groups. But Mr. Fall has also met with uh, representatives of the Anglophone community. He and his team have done so. Yes. Thank you, Farhan. Uh, how concerned is the Secretary General about the detention of two Reuters journalists in Myanmar? Uh, we've made clear our concerns uh, about this situation. And we've also made clear uh, when this issue came up that uh, these two journalists uh, had not uh, been uh, providing information uh, to the United Nations. Uh, they are, they are going about their journalistic tasks, and, and we, uh, as with all journalists, we hope that they can go about su such tasks without hindrance. Uh, follow-up. Uh, um, have any U.S. officials reached out to Myanmar? And uh, if they have, whom in Myanmar have they spoken with? Uh, I'd rather not uh, uh, specify what our contacts are on this issue. I, I've said what we have to say about this, but obviously uh, uh, they, they, they were not working for us, and, and, they, and uh, it's clear that... Uh, that uh, all journalists should be free to go about their work with that, without uh, harassment or, or detention. Yes. Yes. You, you. Yeah, do you have any reaction or uh, hopes for the ministerial meeting that may happen in Canada on DPRK? And sort of as a follow-up, do you know if Russia and China will be invited to that? Well, uh, the question of who will be invited is really one for the Canadian authorities. Obviously, we're hoping that uh, all initiatives uh, to deal with the question on the Korean Peninsula can be helpful towards the, the implementation and the peaceful implementation of the Security Council resolutions on the denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. Yes. Uh, Van, do you know when Mrs. Zerugi will start uh, her work in DRC? Uh, well, we uh, named her appointment uh, just, just about a week or so ago. Uh, hopefully, it'll be fairly shortly. We don't have a, an official start date to say just yet. Yes. Sure. I wanted to, the, the foreign minister of Greece, uh, Mr. Katsias, uh, had sat down with reporters and said that this is the name issue he expects to be solved in 2018, saying this would remove a roadblock for, for a former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia. Anyway, at least as written up, the interview doesn't even mention Mr. Nimitz. And I'm wondering, can you give us some description of what, I know he's been on this file for a long time. What's he been doing recently? And why would it be that, 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 that the Greek foreign minister in addressing the issue, the UN didn't even seem to be part of the picture? Uh, I, I don't have to clarify what, uh, the Greek foreign minister would say that's that's really up to him. Uh, for our part, Mr. Nimitz has been going about his work. We have always announced whenever there are meetings uh, conducted on the name issue, and we'll announce the next one whenever we have the time to give. Yes. Yeah, uh, Iran has has conveyed a message of concern regarding the foreign interference in the protests inside Iran. Has the Secretary General received that letter, and what is his response to it? Uh, uh, yes, we, we received the, the letter. Regarding the Secretary General's views, we issued a statement on Iran yesterday, so I would just refer you to that. How, how do we view the situation now? Uh, the, uh, do you have an update about the situation uh, in Iran? <laughs> the statement uh, we put out yesterday describes our, our views on the situation. Yes. Sure. I'm, I'm sure you saw that the, the uh, President of the General Assembly met with the uh, DPRK permanent representative and put out a readout. Maybe, I guess I'm wondering, has the Secretary General, does he, would he like to himself speak with North Korea, whether it's through the permanent representative or otherwise? I'm just wondering, I guess, is it, can you say whether DPRK has asked to meet with the Secretary General as they asked to meet with the PGA? And if not, what would you read into that? Uh, I don't have anything to say about contacts with the DPRK uh, today on this. Uh, what I can say is that if, if there is any meeting uh, with officials from the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, we'll let you know at that point. And I've noticed on, on the, since, since I think he came back on the third, both days it said all appointments are internal. Can you give some, some sense of what he's doing? I mean, I, he issued this red alert, so it's, it's, some expected, like, when he got back, he'd... What's he doing up there? He's meeting with uh, officials throughout the Secretariat, basically uh, dealing with uh, what uh, the, the big concerns are, uh, in, including you know, meeting with uh, some of the key committees that, that he has. Can yeah. I ask a snow question? I just wanted to ask you, sure. I, I, was, it, it was, I was sort of, a, since the city itself closed public schools and the transit issued various warnings of changes, and I did see that the, that the UN 
suspended tours and visitors. Mm -hmm. What's the relationship between the, who makes the decision for the, for the UN, and what's its relation to New York City's, including transportation decisions? These uh, decisions are made by the Department of Management and the Department of Security and Safety. They look at uh, the relevant uh, con considerations about whether it's safe to come here or not. And they do take into account uh, the facilities available in New York City, but uh, this is the decision they made uh, at, at, as of this morning. What's the distinction between, I guess, visitors and, and staff and correspondents, non-resident correspondents? How does, what's that, what's the, can you know the basis of them suspending tours, but? If, if we do not have the capacity on certain days, to maintain security for all the various entrances, then uh, then there are certain activities like uh, the activities of the visitor side that would need to be suspended. And just one last, because I remember after Superstorm Sandy, there was a lot of. I remember there was a big meeting in the North Lawn Building where diplomats were kind of critical of the UN in terms of its communication of weather-related issues. Have there been improvements since that time, and and where are they reflected today? Uh, yes, and and, and staff uh, received uh, periodic updates uh, throughout the evening. In fact, uh, about whether or not the building would be open. Uh, if the building were closed, we would have uh, put out an announcement as soon as we could. Did journalists I was I was hoping we could do that, frankly. Sure, sure. I mean, I, I, personally, I didn't receive anything. So I'm wondering, did, did Malu or DPI inform some journalists, non-journalists? How did it work? Uh, you'd have to ask Malu, the media accreditation people, what they did. Have a good afternoon.